Hi folks, welcome to our devotional Bible study today. Today we're going to look at grace. In fact, for the next couple of sessions, we're going to be looking at grace. And today's scripture is Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 10. So uh, let me read that from the NIV to you and you can read along with me or you can simply listen to my voice. So from verse 1, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of yourself, it's the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for us in advance to do. Let's pray. Father, when we read your word together, we are so aware that we need your Holy Spirit to join with that word and to join with our souls to be able to enable us to draw all of the help and refreshment we can from your word. So we ask for your Holy Spirit to come and be with us as we seek to understand what you're saying to us today. In Jesus' name, Amen. The question, what sets Christianity apart from other religions, was asked some of some academics. One said, the concept of incarnation, the idea that God took human form in Jesus. Another replied, actually, other faiths believe that God appears in human form. What about resurrection? The belief that death is not the final word, that the tomb was found empty. No other religions have accounts of people returning from the dead. Oh, that's easy, asked one of them, who we know as C.S. Lewis. He said, it's grace. He said Christianity claims that God's love comes free of charge, no strings attached. No other religion makes that claim. Lewis had a point. Buddhists, for example, follow an eightfold path to enlightenment. It's not a free ride. Hindus believe in karma, that your actions continually affect the way the world will treat you, that there is nothing that comes to you not set in motion by your actions. The Jewish code of law implies that God has requirements for people to be able to be acceptable to him. In Islam, God is a God of judgment, not a God of love. You live to appease him. Only Christianity dares to proclaim God's love is unconditional. He cannot earn it. He gives salvation because of grace. It really has nothing to do with our working hard to be right or our working hard to be less sinful. Grace is all about God and God freely giving to us the gifts of forgiveness, mercy and love. And we access it through faith in Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we do so desire to access your love and your mercy and your grace and we acknowledge that you give it to us freely and we also acknowledge that we tend because of our human nature to package that with the requirements of some religious law but at the end of the day lord you offer us salvation and then all things our love as it's expressed for you and for humanity flows out of that renewal in us that comes from acceptance of Jesus Christ and being filled with his grace. So we ask you to come, Lord, and help us to live out our lives of grace. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Now, folks, I do have three simple questions to encourage you to think about in regards of the devotional today. Let me read them to you. The first one, what triggers God's wrath in our life? That's in our life as Christians or as non-Christians in particular. Are you able to identify your sinful nature with its desires and thoughts? When did Jesus save you? What was your condition before, maybe during, but after the salvation came into your life? Was it a journey? Was it a crisis? Was it a single decision? Was it an academic process? Was it an emotional response? What was it? What happened? I'd like to interact with you, so please write your answers in an email or a message to me so that I can see your answers. Testimonies are so important. They always help other people. Uh, and if you have questions, I'd like to be able to interact with your story so that we can discuss the things that you find out about your faith. Anyway, this week, I hope you have a really good week. I pray that you are blessed and that as you realize more and more the grace of God in your life, you are more and more able to offer grace and mercy and love to those that are around you. But whatever happens, I pray that you have a really good spirit-filled week. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen.